So hello and welcome to our first podcast for the upcoming 2021 Houston Professional Petroleum Data Expo, coming to you in October 2021. Those dates are October 25th and 26th. Thanks so much for joining us today. My name is Andy Garrett, and I am a member of the Houston Leadership Team, a volunteer group within the Professional Petroleum Data Management Association, or PPDM Association. And we're a global, non-for-profit society within the petroleum industry that provides leadership for the professionalization of data management and are the hosts of the Houston Expo. And if you haven't had a chance to join us before, it's a fantastic event, and we're looking forward to seeing you there in person in October. Now, through these podcasts, we want to introduce you to some of the speakers and topics that you can expect at the Expo this year, taking the time to dive a little deeper into their talks. Now, our first speaker is Steve Cooper, VP of Digital Strategy with Quorum Steve, it's fantastic to have you here. You're obviously a recognized leader in the oil and gas data management arena, and actually a past chief communications officer and board member with the PPDM Association. Thank you so much for being here and giving your time to do this. Uh, good to be here, Andy. Thanks for the invitation. Now, at the October Expo, you're going to be presenting a talk on data intelligence-based business intelligence. Now, in your presentation, you're going to discuss the challenges business intelligence solutions encounter with quality data in delivering meaningful enterprise value. You're going to discuss some of what companies are doing to establish organizational data intelligence, in large part by adopting standards for data definitions, integration, and exchange. Now, these standards have been developed over many years by organizations, including PPDM, and are getting much more attention today through the support of the OSDU, or Open Subsurface Data Universe Initiative. Now, this talk sounds incredibly interesting. I'm really excited to dive into it with you today. And of course, it's incredibly relevant given the digital transformation that we're seeing in the industry. So let's get going. I've got a couple of questions for you. So if that's all right, we'll dive straight in. Yep, absolutely. Let's go for it. From your experience, how are companies adapting to digital technology change in their business today? And what impact is that having? Yeah, it, it's a great question. I, I think um, if, if you look in general terms across the industry, it, it's probably you know worth uh, you know taking a ten thousand foot look at things. I, I think a lot of companies or organizations talk about business intelligence, and so business intelligence has been around for a long time with you know, tools like Power BI, Spotfire, etc. They pay less attention or have in the past to what I would refer to as data intelligence. So, you know, there was this, I thought that you could throw all the data into a data lake and put some uh, fancy tool on top with, uh, you know, analytics or AI or ML and make sense of it all. And uh, companies have realized that that's not the case and that uh, you do have to build out data intelligence as a platform, you know, to build your business intelligence tools on top of that. And so we see, you know, a lot of the work that the PPDM organization has done in the past coming to the fore and, and getting more attention through other initiatives such as the OSDU. In terms of, you know, how individual companies are, uh, you know, adopting digital technology, I think it very much depends upon what type of company it is. You know, many of the larger companies, you know, are undertaking you know, those big enterprise-wide initiatives to, you know, totally transform the business through not just digital technology, but looking at the organizational aspect as well. So looking at um, your processes, you know, how do they automate processes? And 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 also dealing with the fact that they've got fewer people these days. So, um, you know, how do they implement change management so they do adapt to new technology but you know it tends you know it's becoming less and less you know again business function focused and more enterprise focused where they're trying to link the back end to the you know the front end processes and I, I think that's the big difference today if you look at the smaller companies they do tend to be more focused on incremental change so they're looking at those manual processes that get repeated over and over again um say how can we automate that how can we replace it with a bot and so each change in itself at that level doesn't have that much impact but when you put them together it, it, it has a significant impact on the organization so i think companies are coming at it from both ends of the spectrum depending upon you know what size they have but the common approach is they all need access to the best data available. And so what we're seeing is, um, 
you know, whether, you know, it's an enterprise initiative to build out this corporate data store or whether it's just, you know, in the small case of the smaller companies that, that tended to focus more on the business unit level, but within a framework for the uh, overall organization. And, you know, so they're trying to build out these, uh, you know, stores of the most trusted data available. But, you know, it's a challenge in the oil and gas industry because, you know, we're all familiar with the old story of the silos and connecting the front end and, and the back end. That You know, those challenges haven't gone away. But I think the tools that are available today are much more sophisticated. And so, you know, companies are able, you know, more successfully to address and solve some of those challenges. And I'm sure we'll get into, you know, what those challenges are later in this discussion. Yeah, awesome. And you mentioned it a couple of times there. It sounds like automation is definitely going to be a big piece. And, you know, we both been around this industry a long time. You, you also have a lot more experience than I, but, you know, automation, some parts of oil and gas is huge. What they do from an operational perspective, but it's great seeing that come into the IT side in a more structured way um, and how we're seeing these standards implemented today, getting into data quality and processes to make sure that the data they're using hits the standards that they need it to. Yeah, absolutely. So another another topic um, you're going to cover is acquiring third party technologies to do the automation and data integration. So what are your thoughts on uh, what those do you have on on integrating solutions from different platforms and and this world now going I guess from companies trying to do things very in a very isolated or insular way to now adopting much more broader horizontal technologies potentially to help them out. Yeah, it's um, I, I mean I think everybody is aware that you know trying to integrate you know, data from different platforms is difficult. Uh, it's always been difficult and it, it still is, it, you know, in many regards, there is no magic solution to this. Um, but if, if you look back over time, um, you know, PPDM has played a major role in your know, tying data together from different solutions and it continues to play a major role. Uh, and what I'm thinking about here are some of the you know, standards initiatives like what is a well, what is a completion, well identification and uh, well status and classification. So there's, uh, there's a series of um, initiatives that were undertaken by PPDM as an organization that I feel really laid the groundwork for integration. It, it Initially, you know, I don't think the impact of that was was truly realized, but um, I think it is starting to be today. So, you know, it, it's not just about the fact that, you know, I've got, you know, a dozen, 20, 30 different applications across the well life cycle. It's a fact that each one of those applications actually defines a well differently, not just, to, not just in terms of the identifiers, but the actually in what they you know what part of the well they're actually describing um you know one of the examples i've run across in the past is working within the same company um it wasn't just that different applications described a well differently even different implementations of the app, same application did the same so we had a uh a, a example of Aries where the data was stored at the wellbore level and another Aries example where we had completion level data. And so when you integrate the data together, it's not just a simple case of matching based upon some identifier. It's actually a question of matching at that level, but also at what level of the well hierarchy. So am I trying to match wellbores to completions and you know, completions to well level and so on and so forth. And so it becomes a very complex uh, problem to solve. And um, like I said, you know, I think PPDM, you know, standards played a huge role in that. As we look forward, you know, I think the, the industry is moving to where, you know, there's a, a real passion to solve that issue of not having to exchange different formats of data. Now, if you take the example of the finance industry, looking back, you know, they had their crisis back in sort of 2007, 2008. And, uh, you know, they defined standards coming out of that for the exchange of financial data to address your know, problems with, you know, money laundering, but also, you know, simple things like going to the ATM and, and being able to go to any ATM and get money out of your bank, not having to go to one that's specific to your bank. And I think the oil and gas industries at that point now, and it, a lot of it came out of uh, 
the 2014 2015 crash where it's like we have to be able to uh, automate processes to get more efficient and and the basis of that is the exchange of data so you see you know the emergence of an I initiatives like the OSDU where instead of pushing data all around they're looking at it saying let's just have a standard for the storage of that data centrally then applications can pull what they want when they want and and push it back you know if it's if it's been modified in some way but instead of these you know behemoth really challenging you know data exchange initiatives moving towards say um more of a centralized standardized repository it, that's really the nirvana of what uh, you know the oil and gas industry is looking for but uh, it, it's not it's still not an easy problem to solve and we're still quite some ways from that so we still have to have applications that can move data back and forward between you know applications like Petrel and a central data store and Kingdom and Geographics and Inertia and you know Quorum has a whole suite of applications that you know need to consume uh, master data so it remains a challenge it will do for a while yeah so I'm mean, building on from that you know one of the, one of the big challenges obviously when you try and centralize anything is, is how do you effectively combine those sources right how do you you know, if you take OSDU or, or anything else, wait, how do you bring them together? What are the best strategies when you're looking at all these disparate sources, still having to rationalize those data models and, and create that quality data? Yeah, I, I think, you know, speaking of as someone who's been through the school of hard knocks on this, I, I think there are, you know, definitely lessons learned along the way, um, you know, without, you know, getting too technical on things. I mean, I think the first step is really to establish good governance for your your definitions of you know what is a well get the organization to agree upon you know what is the definition not just of well well bore completion but things like your know, zone formation producing interval stuff like that it's important to establish that across the enterprise and it it's always easier said than done because everybody has different opinions on what things are but without defining that it then becomes it becomes difficult if not impossible to translate that into a technical solution and so you know defining what that is and then extending that around to um you know some of the reference data you know the things i often think about is a well status and classification so you know an organization you know at a simple level will want to say well you know how many producing wells do we have well what's the definition of a producing well um is it one that's you know produced within the last 12 months is this one that produced today you know it, those, those are important to get and they're difficult to get and um and it changes depending on which you know application you're looking at many companies actually struggle to you know, not only say how many producing wells we've got, they actually struggle to say how many wells do we have because, uh, you know, of the different definitions. And then, you know, you want to, you know, look at things like coordinate reference systems, make sure, you know, you're on standard coordinate reference system, units of measure. You know, there's a lot of things you you, you need to address up, up front as, as part of governance. And I, I think governance got a bad reputation over the last uh, 10 years because, you know, too many nameless consulting organizations would come in and turn it into a two-year project. It, it doesn't need to be. There's organizations like PPDM who have done a lot of the hard work. So use that as a starting point. And then, you know, I think what's important is look at the, you know, what what data do you need to integrate? You don't have to integrate everything. There's basically master data that needs to be standardized and integrated. And then everything else can kind of hang off that. Um, so in many companies that I go to and talk to, uh, often our starting point is just 20 or 30 attributes. Let's let's get those mastered across all the applications. And that's, let's not try to boil the ocean on this and, and let's make sure we're successful. Um, so, you know, that's that's mostly what I would say. It's it's about the governance and it's about picking off what's important, not trying to do everything. And then you know, um, 
adopt a, a standard format for data exchange. Uh, the, the solutions out there, Quorum has one, other companies have them as well. Rather than you know, trying to support a whole bunch of point-to-point -point solutions, you know, have, have that standard format. And that's the direction that uh, essentially, you know, the PPDM model started out that way. Um, you know, the, 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 I think the challenge with the PPDM model is uh, it's got tremendous industry knowledge within it, but it's also somewhat tied to a technology. What we're seeing now uh, as PPDM, you know, works with the OSTU is the separation of, of all that domain experience that's built into the PPDM model from the actual implementation structure of that. So you're seeing those same data objects that are embedded in the PPDM model now start to be made available through JSON or or some other format as well. So, you know, if you if you look at the best practices, I would summarize it as, you know, start with governance, start small focus on the master data, adopt standard formats, you know, for data exchange, and, and don't tie, you know, the model definition to the to the technology because technology is uh, you know changing so fast these days. You'll you'll never keep up with it. Yeah, no, I hear you. And actually, in your in your presentation, you talk a little bit about the universal data language as well. And you kind of alluded to that now with, with how you transfer data between different systems, how they communicate together. But uh, do you want to talk a little bit more about that, how you see us benefiting from that, how we get on the same page, talking the same language? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, to me, it's the, you know, it's... It, we can solve so many problems, you know, by having consistent data exchange. This this universal data language, um, you know, if if I can send you a well object, you know, and I or you may know nothing about, you know, let's say whatever this, you know, the the source of this data is. You know nothing about where it came, you know, how it's actually stored, but you say, you know, I need, a, you know, this well object and I'll send it to you in the format that you understand and you can consume it. And it's also got the data quality associated with that as well. I think it's important that, I, you know, you need to know what what the you know, relative quality of this data is. What's the provenance of that data? Not just don't just give me the attributes. Tell me something about that in, in the form of metadata. But you know, it it I go back to the banking or the fine you know the uh, healthcare situation where you know there's this agreed agreed upon format for data exchange, and it, it still applies with the OSDU. The OSDU has their storage uh, internal storage format, but the passing data in a standardized way. So if I develop an application that sits on top of the OSDU APIs and say, you know, say give me all the objects for uh, Andrews County, Texas, all the well objects, boom, I know what I'm getting. You know, if I'm on a certain version, I know what I'm getting. I don't have to go, oh, is it this, is it that? Let me make some modifications. That makes a huge, huge difference to everything. And so companies can focus on developing um, you're developing the application and not having to spend, you know, 90% of the time figuring out how to load that data and how to transform it and so on and so forth. And so for me, you know, having a universal data language, if, if there's one thing I think it's going to drive, it's innovation. Um, because you can focus on solving the business problem and not all the technical issues that go with uh, your kind of managing and dealing with that data. Uh, and I would also want to emphasize again, because I've talked about the OSDU there, but PPDM is a huge part of that because PPDM came into being, I think, around 1990. And uh, so you've got 30 years worth of industry experience embedded in that model. And I think too many people go, oh, you know, I'm not going to use PPM because it's, you know, it's this relational data model. It's old, it's rigid. It's like, that, you know, the missing the point is that, you know, the, the tables themselves are essentially data objects. In many cases, if you, if you cut out all the, um, you know, PPM specific stuff like OBSNO and, and stuff like that, you get to the essence of what is a well, what is a well ball, what is a completion, and, and they, you know, create the basis of what the data objects are. So I'm, I'm glad to see that the OSDU is picking up, you know, 
the, the PPDM data model and definitions and reference code standards and things like that and, and building them into you know what this uh, you know universal data language is. Yeah, and then, you know, um, to me, it's, it's awesome seeing how the technology has evolved to help with the development of that kind of language, right? The ability to transmit schemas when you transmit data, I think, is a massive part of that, as you say, to help consumers understand what it is they're getting, what it means to them. So it's, it's really exciting to see that evolve, you know, through the standards, obviously, the PPM helped develop, but how that's being implemented in practice now as well. So we're getting, you know, now we've talked about the universal data language, we can get into that next stage, which is, of course, how you combine tools into workflows to make business decisions. And that's really the aim of it, right? You know, you, you've got the data, we've talked about how you have that quality, how you could store it. Now it's a case of, you know, how you combine the decision tools together so you can actually enact something based on that new intelligence. Maybe I could throw that back to you and what you, what you see there. Yeah, um, I think... You know, we kind of pull it all together. I think what's important to emphasize, because people say, you know, sometimes I'll go to conferences and people say, oh, nothing's changed. And um, I find that kind of an annoying statement because I think everything's changed. Um, you know, we, we, we deal with some of the same problems, but we have so many more tools at our disposal now to uh, to solve these problems. You know, technology has advanced at uh, such a dramatic rate that you know, we can do things today that weren't possible three or four years ago. And I think we've got the standards in place. We've got the will to do this. And I think that's a big change uh, in the industry. You know, companies are willing to collaborate a lot more. So you see companies coming together in support of standards because you say, you know what, we'll compete on how we interpret the data. We don't want to compete on how we manage the data and how we share that data. So thing, a lot of things have changed, you know, and so, but, you know, there's a huge focus now in, in you know, building together that single source of the truth uh, for master data. And you know, and then you know, building platforms on top of that, and and so you know, I think the changes we're going to see, some of them are coming quickly. So as we build out, you know, companies build out the single source of the truth. They are um, investing huge amounts in uh, you know analytics in that business analytics space. So uh, you know, you've got great tools in place, and then and you can you know, as you integrate this data across the enterprise. You know, you can, um, you know, really run, you know, terrific dashboards that will, you know, predict failure, uh, enable you to, um, you know, optimize operations more efficiently. You know, as we get into, you know, more of the AI and ML space, um, it's, uh, you know, it opens up tremendous possibilities, uh, you know, for, for improving operations, looking for new opportunities. I think what's going to take more time is is like the, you know, as you mentioned, is it's the automation of operations. It's you know, if I do this, then do this, this, and this, but you know, without any human input. So you know, and that's going to require breaking down the silos between the data uh, stores and, and establishing all those standards. I, I see that taking a little bit longer because it, it tends to be more complex. But companies are making you know, tremendous strides in that space. And the linkage of the back office to the front office is the sort of stuff that's not as sexy, so it always gets left to the last, but it's hugely important. I, I'm seeing your big strides being made in that space as well. And so it's very exciting. It's an exciting time to be in the space. I, uh, I heard, I think it was um, a lady, uh, I won't mention her name, but she's, uh, you know, head of uh, digital strategy at Shell and said, you know, data management has become cool and uh, data management has never been cool. So that's that's exciting for everybody there. No, absolutely. And and you already talked a little bit about what you see in the future there. I mean, it, it's very exciting to me what's happening as far as intelligent oil fields and seeing that really come to the fore and IoT and edge and all these things that, that can build on top of the, the foundations that you've laid out in the, in the talk today. And obviously, the people can come and hear from you uh, when they come to the expo, but I don't know if you want to have a make any other comments there about you're seeing as far as future updates of technology and and how you see that evolving now even beyond uh you know the data enablement and integration pieces 
Well, I, I, I think um, I think you touched on a lot of it there, Andy, in that in that summation. I, you know, at Quorum, we, we've done a lot of research in that space, and you know, the, a few areas that we we haven't really talked about here, and uh, you know, I'll touch on more in in the talk is, you know, the, the huge migration to the cloud and to SaaS. Um, you know, that's game changing as well, and I think it took uh, people, including myself, a while to realize. You know why that is, and um, it, you know a lot of it is around the flexibility to expand and contract as you go. But not just that; it's it's about um, you know a lot of it's about the deployment and upgrade of software. You know because we're talking about data management solutions that are the complex and the big, and uh, you don't want to be upgrading that very often. So you end up with out of date software. Whereas in the you know the SaaS model in the cloud, it's you know everything's broken down into microservices with constant upgrades. So we're able to deploy uh, technology much quicker and uh, you know deliver the benefits to the end user much faster. Uh, and as you said, you know that that then leads into the IoT and edge computing and uh, you know just things that are you know going to be a tremendous boon to this industry. Awesome. Well, Steve, I've, I've got to stop you there. I know we're we're about at time. I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to come and talk to us. It's been a fantastic first podcast. It's really been exciting for me to, to host it, and I really appreciate all your time and insight. So thank you very much for that. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here, Andy, and I appreciate, uh, again, the opportunity to come and, and talk, and I encourage everybody to attend the PPDM Expo and get some more details. Fantastic. Yeah, for everyone listening, that's going to be on October the 25th and 26th. You can find more information out on our website, ppdm.org. I encourage you all to go take a look. Please sign up and register. We've got obviously attendees. There's some fantastic agenda of talk tracks on a huge range of different topics. And if you're interested in um, actually exhibiting at the event as well, please let us know. We've got lots of space uh, for you to do that as well. So again, Steve, thank you so much. And we'll see you again on another podcast. Take care, everybody.